All right, so this is my Ubuntu Steam Machine. It's an S4 Mini, small form factor, an i5 something, I can't remember, a uh, last gen one, and a GTX 1070, the Mini. Um, great case, but uh, I found a script, I'll link to it in the description that kind of turns uh, an Ubuntu install into like an automated style SteamOS install, so it gives it the Steam branding. Um, boots up and it installs open SSH in the background. I don't really use it. It kind of just like maintains itself, which is um, a lot more useful, especially like in a console like environment. Um, and it just loads steam. So I don't see a desktop. I never see purple. <laughs> um, I'm just going to show Witcher real quick. One of the reasons so I switched to this was, oh, I should turn the controller on. This is so much easier now to have like a console-like experience without having to do all the maintenance of a Windows machine. So like, I used to set it up with just Windows and instead of Explorer, I would run Steam, but you'd still get like five overlays every time you run something. Um, and then of course having to like go manually update the NVIDIA drivers and sometimes you'd be playing and Windows updates and stuff happen in the background. Here, it just kind of just launches. So the, one of the reasons I switched from SteamOS to, um, to Ubuntu with this script is the dev PPA for the graphics drivers PPA uh, is carrying a new version of the NVIDIA drivers, 39654.04.05, I can't remember. Um, but the performance now in games like Witcher is pretty it's pretty awesome. Like I don't, this is a 4K TV. This is a KSA 1000, it's the Samsung. Um, and it's just really good. Unfortunately with Proton, I don't really have an option I can't find in the menus of even trying to run it at 4K. Um, it's also an NVMe drive, so like compared to consoles, this is, look at this. This is 60 frames a second. The graphics are a mix of high and medium. Usually turning shadows is like the key. Turning shadows down to get in the full. Then you're lucky I happen to be in Novograd, which is a very like busy area. Uh, but the game runs pretty, pretty much beautifully. Um, the thing kind of updates itself uh, in the background and the setup to get here was really complex. Um, so I'm kind of hoping uh, with things like the script and stuff like that, that it becomes a lot easier. My machine downstairs, I have two console PCs actually instead of consoles, um, is running SteamOS, uh, the beta snapshot. And I've actually got Bcache running on that because um, I don't have a big of an SSD down there. And that kind of gives me the hybrid drive setup with a four terabyte drive and a 240 gig SSD. And then you Bcache those together just like you would on like an Ubuntu server. Um, and that gives me basically a four terabyte hybrid drive. And the kernel's smart enough to figure out where shit should go depending on what game I'm playing and stuff. It's really, really nice. Um, but obviously not as nice as having a pure NVMe only drive up here, which is what I have up here. So I could, like, I'm doing a replay through this right now. There's a few bugs with Witcher. Rot fiends are invisible, but it still shows their label above them. So it's like not a deal breaker. There's been maybe one or two times where um a character's face doesn't render right it looks invisible like the like the uh, assassin's creed unity screenshots you might have seen but other than that the game is like 95 percent there it still looks beautiful runs at a solid 60 like the shit actually works which i still like can't believe so enough of my library now has is working that i actually have stuff i could be doing like playing through some of these games uh, while I get patches and stuff in the background. So um, I think I've gotten two Steam Play updates since I set this up, and they show up as just uh, game updates in the game itself. Um, so it'll say, you know, Witcher 3, 100 and, or 320 megs, or however much Proton ends up, um, ends up being, and then you'll see the games get updated. But it's nice. Yeah, there's no hair works and stuff, but in this game, you kind of prefer not having hair works. This is just as normal hair. Um, so yeah, it's just a quick overview. It's a really, really great script that guy put together. Uh, thanks if you're watching this. 
Uh, you save me a lot of time. And hopefully at some point we'll get a new SteamOS snapshot um, that makes this automated or or maybe someone will package up the script in a snap or put the compositor and all the other kind of stuff that comes from Steam in a snap so that people could just build these things um, because it is it is really useful. One thing I didn't talk about, I don't have here, is uh, the Xbox controllers. If you have the newer ones, the Xbox One S controllers are Bluetooth. Um, and those will work, those will pair just fine. I just happen to prepare, uh, prefer the Steam controllers. But, um, and the PS4 controllers, of course, work fine, all with Bluetooth. The, the, the bummer with the Xbox Ones is that you don't get rumble because it's connected through Bluetooth. But you can do, uh, and I think this is hardware dependent, depending on the Bluetooth that's like on your motherboard, you can do two, I was able to do two Xbox One S controllers connected to a Linux machine. So if you have someone who's like scared scared of the Steam controller or something, you can set them up with with that thing. So yeah, um, beta PPA, a bunch of manual stuff, but once it gets up and running, it's it's pretty seamless. Like, um, so hopefully it'll keep getting there. All right, cheers everyone.